Good afternoon all and, and welcome back to Cisco Live Virtual. This afternoon we're going to continue on the theme of security by taking a deeper look at multi-cloud segmentation and what's possible with workload protection using Cisco's Tetration. My name is Dave Robbins. I'll run you through the content and share some ideas this afternoon and I'm responsible for the workload protection business here in Asia Pacific. And really, as we've looked to evolve our capabilities in this space, we've thought about the different ways in which applications are changing. We look at the modern sort of application environment that we need to secure, and it looks very different to an environment that we might have faced just a few years ago. We know that applications can run anywhere. They can run in our data centers. They can run in a public cloud or any mixture thereof. We know that they change constantly. Change rates have never been faster. And equally, we know that they're unique as well. We see an increasing diversity in the different patterns and the different frameworks used to build and deliver these application environments. And so we're evolving our security approach to build new protections that are closer to the application. So we secure as close to that application as possible. We continuously automate how we secure it because that's the only way we could possibly keep up with this rate of change. And finally, we make sure that there is adapted to that application as well. And so that really sets the framework for the new security paradigm we need to build in the data center and cloud. But I think it's worth pausing for a moment and also reflecting that in the same sense, those old applications, those traditional classic applications ultimately power a lot of business environments are still really, pretty, really critical as well. So as much as we need to adapt to these new applications for many organizations, particularly larger, more complex organizations, we might only be bringing in five or 10% of net new applications each year. And equally, we might be re-platforming or modernizing another five to 10% of applications each year as well. But that means we've still got a large classic or installed base of applications that we need to be able to secure as well. And so we need to somehow be able to build a framework that can adapt and secure all of that and actually let us connect those old and new worlds together as well so that we're able to, to really match these applications up to deliver the right sort of application experiences as well. We can't have security getting in the way of delivering on that. Now, earlier today, you've heard from others in the team around Cisco's Zero Trust strategy. So it's worth recognizing that Tetration and our workload protection solution forms a, a key part of that 3W strategy. How do we secure the workforce, the workplace, and the workload? And whilst I won't go into it in any level of depth today, we'll provide links to resources and, and information that shows how all of these different elements are able to interact and connect so that we know how workforces and the workplace interact with applications and we can use that to build a more secure environment. And that's a, a really critical part of our strategy and something we've invested a lot of development time and a lot of focus in being able to achieve. With that in mind, Cisco Tetration delivers four key sets of capabilities. The first of those is application segmentation. So how do we contain lateral movement in the data center to make sure that a compromise or an issue in one part of the environment doesn't then cascade to other parts of the environment as well and put the entire organization at risk? And we know this is a highly effective security control. We now bring the elements to make that a practical implementation as well. Secondly, we want to understand how that relates to policy and be able to continuously track this. So it's not good enough just to lock down and contain lateral movement at one point, but how do we make sure we've got a continuous ecosystem working to ensure and understand and secure the environment and make sure and be confident that it remains compliant as well? And we'll touch a little bit more on that as we go through today. Thirdly, process and communication information we can also use within Tetration to be able to identify and make decisions based on behavioral anomalies. So again, excellent information to start to bring in and better harden these modern and very dynamic workload environments. And last but certainly not least, we bring all this together and then do some detailed analysis to understand what we call the attack surface of the applications in your environment. So what, what are communication elements are open but maybe not required? What software vulnerabilities are in the environment that need to be patched or somehow mitigated. We collect, understand, and process large volumes of information 
so we can make fact-based decisions on how we best reduce the attack surface and secure the overall environment. And so really one of the key capabilities that we see many customers choosing to deploy with Tetration is its app segmentation capabilities. So this is the ability regardless of whether an environment is running in VMs, bare metal, containers, or most likely a mix thereof, including things like uh, mid-range systems as well, we're able to provide not just a micro-segmentation framework, but bring that closer to the application and build personalized but scalable application security policies, which provide a protective bubble around each individual workload and the applications and application groups that they reflect. Again, I've touched on this before today, but a really critical thing is that we can do this regardless of the target environment as well. So I shouldn't have to accept a different security posture or a different micro-segmentation strategy or a different approach to hardening just because the environment or the application is running somewhere else. Now, that may be appropriate that I want to have that different sort of environment, but I should have the same tools, I should have the same visibility and ability to apply segmentation regardless of environment. Shouldn't have to accept that maybe policy will work differently in AWS there's Azure or GCP, we need that to be consistent. So how with Tetration are we able to achieve this goal of app segmentation, the ability to secure any workload in any place? And I think to understand that the challenge of that, I know many people listening today have probably been through this themselves, but the first thing we need to do is to be able to understand the environment. It's an easy thing to say, but often a very, very difficult thing to achieve, particularly at scale. In many organizations that we work with, it, it's actually quite remarkable the amount, the intensity of things that go on in a data center environment. It's not just a few thousand app to app conversations every hour. We literally see millions of unique application to application, server to server communications within the data center in any, any given short period of time in any hour. And so we need to be able to collect that information. We need to be able to collect it accurately so we don't miss anything, but be able to process it as well. And so that's where Tetration, being a rich data-driven platform, is able to pull in network communication information, able to pull in process information. So not just what's the server communicating with, but what processes are doing that communication. And then pull that into our application insights engine so it can give an accurate view of dependencies and an accurate baseline where we can act on, on really fact-based decisions to better secure the environment for things like segmentation and other use cases as well. And so once we've got that information, that we can then move to enforcement. Now, the Tetration agent, that's a, a capability that will take and apply that enforcement natively on the host. Again, one of the beauties of that is it doesn't matter where that application is running. We know that being close to the host we're going to be able to secure it appropriately. And again, there's different techniques or approaches that the platform uses for things like containers as well. So that is one way to secure it. Equally, we publish that information and integrate with Cisco and third-party tool sets so we're able to take that policy and implement it on other platforms as well. So as an example, taking that information, using it through firewall automation to be able to then implement a secondary level of security throughout the environment as well. That information is open, as we'll talk about in a moment, published and ready to be used. Now, the third thing that brings us all together is the compliance alert capability. So this is bringing in additional information, understanding things about the security of the processes in the environment and using that to better harden that model as well. So we can add that information in. So as we continue to secure the environment, we know that we can adapt it based on what we learn maybe from third-party systems that help us make, again, those informed decisions. So that is how the product or the capability works. Learn what's going on, use advanced machine learning to be able to build accurate application views, dependency views and other information, enforce that consistently regardless of where it is and be willing to adapt as the environment changes and the threat landscape within our data centers and things trying to access the data centers changes as well. And so 
I thought it might be useful to put that really in context of real world experiences with segmentation. We've worked over the years with many, many customers looking to implement segmentation projects. And we know there's a couple of critical success factors that need to happen for a segmentation project or for the difference in a segmentation project between a project that it was a great idea but very difficult to implement or maybe disruptive to the business versus a segmentation project that hits its outcomes, that doesn't deliver additional operational risk to the business and significantly impacts the security of the environment as well. Now, most discussions around segmentation historically have started with a conversation of enforcement of the policy. Now, again, definitely important, but we would argue possibly one of the less challenging things that you need to consider in this sort of environment. In fact, where you, you need to start it, and that first challenge is understanding what my policy should be and being able to accurately define that. And so that's where we're able to use rich data to be able to solve for that problem. Turns out, though, the really critical thing is before I get to enforcement, I need to be confident that the policy I'm going to put in isn't going to break things, isn't going to miss things, and is going to be accurate in enforcing the environment. And this has been incredibly difficult to achieve. So with something like tetration, not only can we model appropriate policies, but we can, with complete accuracy, go back through maybe three months data of every single thing that's happened in the data center and evaluate that new policy against our billions or tens of billions of indiv individual events to understand the true impact of that, of that new policy. So to put that in context, I can think of a number of segmentation projects that I'm aware of that have been derailed by things like maybe missing a batch process from a finance system to a payroll system that might only happen once a quarter or once a month or once a week. So it's very easy to miss through traditional techniques for mapping a data center environment. But in this, and, and so when it's missed, of course, that brings about risk, that brings about turning on segmentation, that breaks something critical, like in the example of payroll, the processing of payroll information. And pretty quickly, that security initiative gets pushed back based on risk to the business. So policy and simulation and testing is a really critical success factor, and that's why we designed Tetration with that in mind. I mentioned before we need to be able to adapt to changing environments, not just within uh, our workload protection platform, but by pulling information from third-party systems as well, SIMS being one great example of how to do that. And then finally, by having forensic-grade record-keeping of everything that happens in the data center. Traditionally, segmentation projects, even the really well-executed projects, suffer from the challenge that the moment you put it in and implement it, from that time on, often the policy only gets weaker or misses things because it's very hard to keep that up to date. So not only do we want to capture everything that we block, we want to capture everything we allow as well and continuously use this really in a positive feedback loop. So instead of that policy atrophying over time, our segmentation gets stronger, more effective and more powerful as we go. And so what, where do we see customers choosing to look at tetration and choosing to look at workload protection technologies to improve their environment? And I would say first and foremost, security hardening is an absolute top of mind consideration. How do we reduce risk? How do we minimize that surface attack area? We know it works. In fact, it's very well documented across any number of different industry recommendations that this is something that makes sense and that we should do, but it's been challenging to do in the past. So that's why this has had considerable appeal using workload protection as a key investment for security hardening. Secondly, compliance. And we look here at, at really two lenses. One is how can I make sure I comply? How do I be able to prove to auditors that I'm meeting the requirements of PCI DSS or SWIFT CSP or any number of other different security standards I may need to adhere to by choice or by regulation? Or alternatively, how do I use this tool set or complementary, I should say, how do I use this tool set to then be able to bring together that information and make informed decisions on how best to comply with the environment as well. Good example of that was something like a cardholder data environment for PCI. 
if I understand and can scope that environment accurately, then I can really reduce the area that comes under that compliance, draw a line around it, and then that helps drive cost and time out of that compliance initiative. So we know that that's something that's very useful for a lot of customers. We consistently get that feedback and, and it's a real driver for looking and evaluating these sort of technologies. Now we touched on at the start of the session that the other one that's often a trigger to reevaluate a security model and look at something like workload protection is a move or, or a deep dive move into a multi-cloud strategy. And so as you start to look at what it's going to take to at scale operationalize either a hybrid or multi-cloud model, then having consistent data, consistent enforcement is a real challenge. So the opportunity here is to build a model that's going to deliver on that. And that, that again is a key driver. And we see some others as well, more in terms of enabling new business models with consolidation. And as I mentioned, just the ability to act in implementing better security, better hardening and moving to zero trust with complete confidence that you know the outcome of what you're going to do and you know the benefit to the business and you know that you're not going to be introducing risk to the organization as well. Now, over the, the last few minutes, we, we've talked through that. It's probably a little bit hard to visualize use PowerPoint today. So it's maybe a little bit difficult to understand how that might look like. So what I, I thought I'd do is just quickly bring up our instant demo environment. Now, this is available on Cisco.com. In fact, the best way to go there is just go to dcloud.cisco.com. Anyone with a Cisco login can get there and you can get access to an instance of this that we've got running in the cloud and start to experience what this might look like in real life by following through a couple of little lab guides that we show you. So if you're technically minded, it's worth having a look at that. So I'm just gonna jump on my computer here and change over to my web browser so you can start to have a look at that. And so what we see here is our instant demo environment. We've got a, a number of application environments and in fact, what I've got showing here, just as we, we jumped in, is possibly one of the simplest environments you could imagine. One simple set of application servers, maybe for a new app you might be developing in a lab, connecting to a number of different kind of critical business services we might want to connect to on the back end. Things like reporting and domain controllers. Now, this is in our demo environment. You see some more complex ones there, but what I think is interesting is even in that most simple of environments, we see the base segmentation policy, if you were to look at all the different policies you might need, something like 80 different possible conversations or, or conversations that we might want to allow or deny or allow in this case. And so if you imagine trying to build a rule set, and we all know how difficult it is to contain, manage, build firewall rule sets with all the regression testing and everything that you need to do. Imagine having to build 80 policies just for one application environment or one application team. And the reality is that's in many ways what we're being asked to do or what we're asking others like security operations to do each and every day. So it's no wonder it's really difficult for organizations to keep up with that rate of change. And so what Tetration does is can learn that environment. As you look at the instant demo environment, you'll see how we very quickly take that long rule set and show, start to show that in the realm of a couple of very basic, simple policies that use English language rather than things like IP addresses to be able to articulate the, uh, the desired policy in the environment. One thing in particular that's really important is the clustering capability. So instead of having to di dictate this policy on a server by server basis, the system's smart enough to look at the data and say, hey, I, I can see in this case two, but it could be 10 or 20 or 30 different workloads all with a very similar set of behaviors. I think that's the middleware tier or the database tier or whatever it might be. And I can start to treat that as one part of the policy instead of individual servers. That's something Tetration does really, really well. And again, as we move from theory to practice, it's a very important capability to be able to deliver this at scale. I touched on the enforcement capabilities earlier, but again, the policy analysis thing is another really important set of capabilities. Go on, explore it, have a look if this is something you're interested in. And it's, it's again, really compelling. If you can look at across, in this case, 5 million observations, but potentially tens or hundreds or billions of observations 
and understand impact, that's a really powerful tool to make sure you understand what's going to happen in the environment. One last thing to show you on top of that, as well as really in the security environment, the power of some of the dashboards that roll this information up in a way that can be relevant for decision makers and relevant to drive uh, appropriate decisions, or sorry, appropriate decisions. And so what we see here is a particular scope that I've selected in the environment. What's interesting about this, and I'm picking on one that, that maybe isn't that great, but that again, this is this is reality of what we see in many environments as well. But what what we're observing here is a time series view on a date by date basis of the security or the security posture of an application. Are there any known vulnerabilities in that application? Again, you can pull some data from third parties, but Tetration itself has a rich vulnerability capability. So we're, we're delivering this natively on the platform. And in fact, this will deliver all the vulnerability capabilities that many organizations might need to manage in their environment. We're looking at process hashes, the attack surface, forensics, other information to ultimately build a vulnerability score, and probably more importantly, help drive continuous improvement. So make, as I said, informed decisions on how to secure things. Uh, be able to show improvement over time or decline over time in the security posture of the environment. So as you get the chance to go and have an instant demo or maybe do some of the more detailed labs, you'll get to see a whole set of these security capabilities, the, forensic, the vulnerabilities management, the forensics management, as well as the data platform where you're able to build using that, that significant data lake, your own applications to be able to make use of that data as well. And so now that you've seen that instant demo environment, I'm just going to wrap up. And I do want to reiterate, we just touched on it with the application platform, but Tetration is built from the ground up to be an open platform. So that means RESTful APIs, that means a Kafka bus that you can subscribe to any number of different ways so that we can start to do things like integrate out of the box with firewalls and load balances. So we understand, as an example, as applications tra traverse things like application delivery controllers, we still understand the application relationships in that environment. We can start to integrate with service management, things like ServiceNow being one popular example, as well as integrate with automation tooling and platform tooling, things like Kubernetes being a great example of that as well. On top of all of that, it is open, it is published, so you're able to build your own custom applications or leverage it in any way that you want to be able to drive automation and scale in the way in which you operate. Now, Tetration as a platform is available as an on-premise delivery model, which can either be a dedicated hardware appliance, which delivers us the greatest scale. It's really custom built for the best performance for really large scale environments or environments that require on-premises levels of security as well. And you can deliver it in a virtual appliance form factor as well. On top of that, the really popular option right now is Tetration SaaS as a platform. So that's our software as a service architecture, fully redundant, delivered from the cloud per workload. And again, that, that really opens Tetration up so it's accessible to organizations of any size to be able to get some of this great security capability. Really easy, flexible to spin up. Customers that, that go this way really love how quickly they can get up and running. So we have a lot of fun deploying these sorts of environments. And so where to from here? Go on, and if you want some more detail, check out the live sessions from Cisco Live Barcelona. The team did some, some great content there. Um, so worth absolutely going and having a look at that. Uh, check out our hands-on experiences at dcloud, which is dcloud.cisco.com. If you're more technically minded, it's a great way to get some hands-on experience. And don't hesitate if you'd like more information to talk to our security specialist team or the preferred Cisco partner that you work with on your security initiatives. And last but not least, and probably most importantly, think about your existing clouds or data center and cloud security initiatives and practices. How are those traditional approaches that you're working scaling to the challenges of multi-cloud, to the challenges of a far more diverse application environment? And Looking at that, what are the opportunities to move to things like host-based app segmentation, to move to things like greater visibility and understanding in the environment to start to take both cost pressures and resource pressures of how quickly 
you can execute on those projects how, and how secure you can deliver your ultimately your data center, your hybrid cloud, your multi-cloud, your public cloud environments using these capabilities. So that's it from me. I hope you've learned a little bit about Tetration, a little bit about the problems we're trying to solve for. You might go check it out and enjoy the rest of Cisco Live 2020. Thank you.